what's up what's up people what's up evan uh we're at another episode of champion uh beyond the huddle we got evan aubrey right now down in southeastern louisiana by way of orleans uh ontario by way of clearwater academy correct so i'm excited to have you here uh just chop it up talk football talk uh leadership and get to know a little bit more about you yes sir i'm excited to chat excited to get to talking all right so how is um 2024 treating you so far man a lot of changes you're down in louisiana right now uh how is it going right now 2024 has been full of uh change so far it's been mm. it's been an adjusting year so obviously we got to go home for the christmas break from from, from florida so i i did my last uh, my last semester there in florida came home for a couple weeks and then um after the first week in january i moved out to here uh, in louisiana mm. and it's just been it's been an adjustment you know it's adjusting to the university um lifestyle adjusting to the the schedule of it getting adjusted to all the you know, all the schoolwork, all the workouts, you know, just, just balancing my life out, you know, but it's, it's been a process, but I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying it a lot. Love it. Love it. And you seem to be pretty fresh. I know you're right in the thick of things right now with winter conditioning, you know, I have a couple of flashbacks, you know, coming through my head. How's that going right now with that transition? It's I know you guys were working hard, definitely down at Clearwater. Uh, now, you know, it's real Division One off-season training. It's uh, how is it going so far? It, it's wild, man. It's way different than you know <laughs> high school high school development. It's it's something to get used to for, for sure. I'm getting into the swim things right now. Just with, you know, we got like seven workouts a week within five days. So and I'm doing my own training on top of that. So. I'm really just trying to get into the best shape I can possibly be in. But, you know, coming from Clearwater and that Florida heat running all the time, it definitely helps. Mm. Yep. But uh, it's still definitely adjustment. Uh, the conditioning that they do here in university is no joke, man. It's it's uh, it's definitely a battle. <laughs> all right. Love it, man. And uh, I love to go back from the beginning, all right, from the beginning to really what led you here. So everything started for you down in Orleans. If you could just tell us, man, how did you start playing uh, football? How did the story start for you? Yeah, so, shoot, my football started when I was about 10 years old. Um, mm. My brother actually started playing before me. So he was playing on the, the local team there, the Cumberland Panthers. And okay. uh, we, I went to one of his practices the, uh, one day. And I was walking by the field and I was just watching. And I'm like, dang, like, I feel like that's something I want to do. You know, I feel like mm. there's, it's just like a brotherhood. It looked, it looked like a lot of fun. So the coach came yeah. up to me. He asked me, you know, do you want to play? And um, he had, they ended up having uh, three extra spots on the team. So I ended up playing, but I was just a kicker and <laughs> I felt kind of useless <laughs> for a little bit. So I quit for two years. So I didn't play football at all. Okay. I was more of a hockey kid growing up. I just, I really enjoyed playing hockey. Um, you know, I played for the, the local team there. I played competitive hockey for a while. But then once I got to high school, um, one of the high school teachers came up to me and asked me to play on the football team in grade nine. Mm. And so um, I actually started in grade nine as a wide receiver because I was, I was a little kid. You know, I was, uh, I was about 5'10", 160 pounds, you know, f fresh into high school. And um, – so I thought that was the position that would suit me best. So for the first couple of years of me playing football, like truly playing football, I played at right wide receiver. And then um, I started with this academy in Orleans called Gridiron Academy. And Coach yeah, Vic. with Victor. Yeah, Victor, Coach right? Victor. That's yeah, that's great my thing. Guy. That's, yeah, that's my mentor. That's that's my my main guy in in back back at home. So he, um, we were training one day and. Um, I had grown a little bit. I had grown up to about six three, but okay. I was still pretty. I was still pretty lengthy. I was long, mm. um, but I didn't have much mass to me. And what Coach Vic specializes in is changing guys' position from receiver to, to the defensive end, and really, you know, getting them yeah. progress, getting them developed into into um, yeah. you know solid defensive lineman players. So we were training one day, and um, he came up to me. He asked me what I thought about playing D line. 
And at first I was pretty pissed off. <laughs> you know, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't too happy about it. I was like, dang, like, you know, everyone wants to be a receiver or a DB, you know, get that flashy lifestyle. Like, yep. get all the, it got all the hype and whatnot. But then after some talking with some friends and, you know, carefully like thinking about it, I'm like, dang, like coach, coach Vic really has my best interest in, in all of this. Right. So yep. I took his yep. word for it. And from there, I really just started eating like four or five meals a day, working out twice a day. I ended up putting on about 40 pounds within within four or five months, right? So, wow. um, yeah, it was quite it was quite the grind. But then we got to go into um, camps and whatnot. I eventually got recognized by, you know, Coach Jesse and ended up getting down to Clearwater, Florida. Which Great guy, too. Down yeah, in exactly. Clearwater, Coach Jesse. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, let's let's stay there a little bit because i know coach vic uh really well he's from he's from cameroon like me his wife yeah. charmaine their whole family man they're they're great people and he's got a yeah. great culture uh definitely building down there you know 100%. so if you could, and the the what i love about football so is that we get all these great teachers and mentors all around this is definitely one for you if you could tell me maybe some of the things that you learned uh, being around Coach Vic and uh, how that helped you in your transition up until now. Definitely. I mean, Coach Vic was, was a life changer for me, man. He, he's, he's mentored me and, and really guided me through this entire process of, you know, getting to where I'm at today. And, um, you know, I'm eternally grateful for him. He's, he's been mm -hmm. – He's been amazing throughout the whole process. So, I mean, since I started with him, um, my friends were training with him originally. Um, my friend Khalid Campbell, he's actually in mm. Clearwater as well. He's he's picked up a lot of D1 offers. Um, so, I actually started with him. He's a running him. back, I think, correct? Yeah, he, yeah he's the yeah. running back, yeah. So, um, when I first started at Gridiron, I thought I knew what working out was. But, mm. dang, man, Coach Vick, will, Coach Vick will put you through it, man. It's like, it's it's hard work. He really, he really emphasizes on, you know, greatness is the standard, right? That's what we had at Clearwater, but Coach Vic really emphasizes that, you know, nothing is good enough until it's perfect. So we mm -hmm. really just went through the motion of things, just grinding out, you know, the basic workouts. We started off at the field because during COVID, right, it was uh, – we couldn't work out inside. Yeah. Yeah. We were doing a lot of running, a lot of CrossFit stuff. And, um, you know, he just emphasizes on – if you aren't, you know, if you aren't working to where you want to be, you aren't going to progress. So, um, you know, that kind of hardworking lifestyle, that hardworking, um, you know, mindset, he really installs it into you and, and makes it, make sure that you have it for all of the levels that you kind of go to in life. So, I mean, when mm. I went to Clearwater, if we were doing a workout and, you know, some guys might be, you know, half-assing or, or not doing their full potential, you know, it's that it's that mindset where, okay, I'm going to do better than this guy just to, you know, yeah. propel myself into a better position, you know. Um, just working working mm -hmm. hard and, and um, you know, putting your head down and just grinding, you know. That's really what I learned from him and, and mm -hmm. that, um, yeah, just that brotherhood as well from Gridiron, you know. All those guys, those, those became my brothers, you know, those – those weekend yeah. trips to, to Michigan or to Indiana where we went to go do those camps, you know, um, you really, you really make some, some real friends for life. You know, I, my mm -hmm. best friend Khalid, I guess, you know, he's, he's my best friend. I lived with him in Clearwater and, and our friendship mm -hmm. really started when I started Gridiron. So I'm uh, in debt Love to Gridiron. It, man. Yeah. Love it. And if you could tell us a little bit about uh, Orleans football, man. Orleans football, you know, uh, how was it, uh, especially, uh, obviously, you had great mentor, you were around Vic, so you were around excellence, and you got to get a taste very early of the process, and what it yeah. takes to actually be great, and what it takes to give yourself a chance, not only within this game, but just for overall success, and whatever you're trying to accomplish, for sure, but yeah. um, tell me about maybe something that jumped off, you know, um, uh, Whenever you transitioned from Orleans to Florida uh, at first, what were you used to? What was different? Uh, how was yeah. it at first? Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm grateful that Orleans football has kind of, it's came a long way, right? We've had, mm. 
some some trailblazers. You know, Eli Anku, who uh, who actually went to the same high school I did, played for the okay. same high school. Team. Um, it's just once when you have a lot of those guys who who already went through the process and they're coming home and they're there to teach you those things that you're going to see at the next level. Yeah, that's that's a really that's a really big thing for you know young guys who mm. who aspire to kind of be like them. You know, so it's 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 important to have those type of guys that when you go to training and you know you got some dudes that are playing D1 football there and they really set the standard and and they inspire you to you know be in their shoes one day so having that was always huge for me um you know playing with the Panthers and playing with St. Peter's High School there was always you know those those kind of mentors those guidance um, people, I guess you could say, were, were there for you, were there every step of the way. Mm-hmm. Now transitioning to Clearwater, um, you really bring those, you know, life lessons that you get taught while you're in Orleans playing football to, mm-hmm. you know, where you're at currently. So I was fortunate enough to um, have a lot of, like, mentorship, have a lot of guidance um, with my journey and and having those those people there for me it was huge and, and moving to Clearwater, um, you know, you really feel like you can, you can do it, you know, mm-hmm. it's been done before, you know what the standard is, you know what the path is. It's, it's, it's all made for you. You really just got to put your head down and, and get to it. Nice. Love it. Um, yeah. When I think about Clearwater, I've had a, I've had a couple of conversations uh, with coach Jesse, great guy. And what jumps yeah. off to me whenever we speak, uh, he's someone of high integrity, you know, from what I get. But he's also someone that can definitely relate uh, to the players, you know, high energy when it comes to that. So if you could just yeah. tell us now about <clears throat> just the experience, you know, being in this program and what you learned over there. Definitely. Yeah. So originally, like before I had left to go to Clearwater, I was a bit, you know, I was a bit anxious to see, you know, what it was going to be like. I, it was a really it was new for me, obviously. Yeah. So, um, but when I got down there, I mean, immediately I clicked with, you know, all the guys on the team. Yeah. And I really think that that starts with Coach Jesse because he really, you know, he's an empathetic guy. He's a nice guy. And, and that really reflects on the team that he coaches, right? He's a young guy. He's able yeah. to connect with the guys, with the, with the guys on the team. And yeah. um, that helps a lot for new guys when you're able to come in and you're able to, you know, bond with these guys immediately. I feel like that's a big yeah. part of, you know, creating a good culture within a team. So, um, yeah, Coach Jesse's just – he's a great guy. He's a great coach. I mean, he's a genius, an offensive genius. And um, I'm, I'm just – I'm grateful that, you know, he set that standard in Clearwater of, you know, brotherhood and, and, and good culture for me to, you know, come into and and um, and kind of, you know, go through All it. All right. All right. Yeah. So – you took the route of basically transferring down to the U.S., you know, to continue your path, continue your journey. Uh, obviously, you were around Vic, so you got to – and even at the high school you went to and the Trailblazers you talked about, um, you were exposed to a lot of people that took that same path. Did you ever exactly. consider uh, staying back home or were you recruited uh, back home up in Canada or – your mind was pretty much made up, you know, once it clicked for you that, hey, this is the road I'm taking and uh, I'm getting ready to work. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult. It's difficult mm-hmm. leaving, you know, your family at such a young age. It's difficult leaving your yeah. friends at such a young age. I mean, you're going from, you know, seeing people every day that you're comfortable around to moving to a completely new country and really just mm-hmm. – and just focusing and, and trying to achieve your dreams right yeah. but I knew yeah. that when I saw these these guys that were there and I knew like since I started my football journey of playing you know defensive line that's when it really started for me I knew that I wanted to do something with it I knew that I wanted to get something out of it I wanted to make something for myself hmm. and so um I mean there were definitely times when I was in Florida where I was just thinking to myself like dang is it really worth it you know yeah. I'm missing all these important times in my life. I'm missing all these, these, you know, friendships. I'm missing my family, all this. And you really start to think like, dang, you know, is this ever going to ever going to pay out in my favor? But I think that, you know, if you really just keep, keep to the process, you know, stick to it, 
put your head down, work. I mean, it's going to pay off, and I'm I'm grateful mm-hmm. that it has. Um, I'm definitely, you know, I'm not satisfied with where I'm at right now. I'm just, I'm always working to get to, you know, to that next level. And so, um, I was, I was recruited back when I was at home too by, um, you know, mm-hmm. local universities and, and Queens and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But I think that was never really the goal for me. I think getting um, mm-hmm. a free education out of it was also something that was very important. And for so, sure. um, you know, it was it was definitely a tough decision, but overall, I'm just glad that I that I made it, and and I'm happy that you know I'm, I am where I am. All right, um, I'd like to dive into that um, a little bit more too, because you touched on leaving leaving home, you know, at a young age, and as exciting as it is, and as much as you're chasing the dream, as you said, man, um, football is built in a way that it's gonna it's gonna test you, it's gonna test your character. It's going to test your will. No matter how much you love it, uh, yeah. you're going to ask yourself the question, do I love it? <laughs> do I love it enough? You know, for yeah. sure. Because when you're trying to accomplish something great, uh, it comes with that. But the fact that you left, um, I'm pretty sure your parents, Vic, uh, people were involved in this process. You have to make sure that you leave to a place that fits you, that fits your um, your values, <laughs> what you're about, that they care about you, right? So yeah. if you could tell any athletes looking to follow the same path, okay, mm-hmm. what is it that really, uh, on one end, they should make sure that they have themselves in order mm-hmm. to successfully make that transition? Because as you said, it takes discipline, it takes will. You're going out there one way or another to compete. You're not going out there for a vacation, right? No, uh, there's going to be things expected out of you. So that's one end. And on the other end, what should they be looking for in order to be comfortable and in order to be in the best environment? I know that's a loaded question, but I know there's yeah. so much in that that people don't necessarily think about, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think internally, it's it's important to be, you know, somewhat independent um, mm. before you I think if you're always leaning on, you know, mommy and daddy's shoulder, yeah. um, it's it, that's not really, you know, something that you might be built for. You might not be yeah. built for going out, moving to a different country and having to do your own groceries, having to cook for yourself, having to do your laundry, having to, you know, do all yeah. these own things, really, really grow up fast. Right. Mm. So um, I think independence is really something that that's that's important. I mean, when I was living at home, I would be home, but I really wouldn't, I wouldn't rely on my parents for um, doing, you know, small chores for me or, you know, the yeah. bigger stuff. Like I'll, I'll, I'll clean my dishes. I'll do my own laundry, all this stuff. And I'm able to, you know, get myself around, um, do whatever I need to do and take care of business mm-hmm. myself. Right. I think if you're always relying on someone else to do those little things, it might not be a good fit for you to move to a different country. And then, I mean, it, it'll definitely be a process if you do, that's what I'm saying. Like it'll, it'll be a bigger adjustment. It'll be more difficult for you um, to, you know, make that transition. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I think um, if you are looking to take the same path I did, I think it's just important to, to realize that you are going to miss out on a lot of things. You are going to, you know, you're not going to experience the same, you know, senior year of high school that all your friends did you're not going to ex- experience you know all these all these little things that you know all your friends might be telling you about yeah. and in the moment it might seem like it might seem like you know you're missing out like you might be you know pessimistic or, or down about it but in the end it's going to pay off because you know mm. what you're doing right now is going to set you up for what you do in the future right and so yeah. if you're building good habits of, of being independent living on your own um, you know, holding yourself accountable and really just being dedicated to your to your goal. Um, whenever you you know traverse and and football really isn't a part of your life anymore, those characteristics are going to follow with you. And I think that's mm. that's really important for for you know young men growing up. It's it's not what what football gives you, but what you can take out of football, right? What you can Definitely. what football teaches you as a man within it and outside of it are, are really mm. just 
know, important things that you can really use um, during your life. Love it. And um, you touched on a lot of powerful things. One word that just resounds in my head from listening to you is uh, ownership on one end. Uh, you talked about accountability. I'd like to add another one. It's also the importance of having a, a, a vision, right? Because you need to see something. You know, you need to see something for yourself when things are hard, when you're being challenged, when you're being sharpened. Like you said, man, when people are going out doing other stuff, you're out here waking up. Uh, I, I don't know what time right now, working out, going to class, doing all these things. Right. So you need to have a clear vision to hold on to for sure. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when you're when you're sitting there in Florida and you're seeing all your friends going out on Saturday night and you're just sitting in your yep. room. And you, you know, like, oh, dang, I got to get up at seven o'clock tomorrow morning to go do a workout. It's it really makes you question things. But, yeah, you know, it's important to hold yourself accountable and and really realize the true vision of it and really realize, like, what you're there to do. You can't get, just, um, you know, um, distracted from yeah from the end goal. Right. And um, it's okay to feel those things, right? It's okay to feel like you're missing out. It's okay to feel like, you know, this might not be worth it. But in the end, like, you really just got to stick to it, right? You got to you gotta be dedicated to it. And, um, that's yeah, I feel like that's just the most important thing for sure. All right. So what yeah. was your, um, what's your greatest memory down in Florida at Clearwater? Dang. The first thing that really just sticks out of my head is um, – we played a game against Sarasota Riverview and mm. um, that was the craziest game of football I ever played in my life. Mm. It was crazy. Um, first half we were, we were really, you know, getting things figured out. Right. We were still, sadly, we lost our defensive coordinator um, earlier this year, coach Rich Stubler. And um, mm. on the defensive side of things, we were, we were trying to figure things out all season. Right. It, it made it, it made it more difficult for us. And yeah. um so that really it really transitioned into games where first half of the game it was really us trying to figure out what was happening on defense and then second mm-hmm. second part of the second half we were we were starting to shut things down but so to start this game um in the first half we were actually losing i think it, we were down by like 21 or 20 23 points or something like that something crazy mm-hmm. we ended up coming back um in the second half um a lot of big plays on offense um just just a, some good football happening and then it came down to about the last minute right and um we were losing i think it was 33 31 or something something very close and um the other team was trying to you know take a knee to, to you know run out the game clock and and everyone was getting into scruffles with the ref and hmm. there was a bunch of uh you know discussions going on and the refs were getting pretty uh upset or whatnot and they were threatening to, you know, call the game early because um, um, some guys on on our defense were, you know, getting in little fights with the offensive line and whatnot. Um, but then they ended up knee, taking a knee. And then on the next snap, one of their um, running backs that was, you know, beside the quarterback before he took a knee took a uh, did a backflip. And they ended up getting a, a penalty. Wow. Yeah, he did a backflip, which sent them back 15 yards. And then they ended up snapping the ball and running to the back of the end zone. And they got a safety for that. So then we were down by like one point, And then we ended up getting the ball back on an onside kick through a Hail wow. Mary. We ended up winning the game. And it was crazy because even before the game had ended, they had coaches on their sideline coming out to us, screaming at us, you know, go back to Canada, oh, all this good. stuff. Wow. Yeah. And. It just it just felt really good when that ball was caught during the Hail Mary and, and we ended up winning the game and, and ruining their homecoming. That's what we were known for this year. Every homecoming game that we played, we won. Ruining it. Great. <laughs> yeah, it was a good it was a good uh, good feeling. Wow. All right. That's yeah. pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool. Hey, by the way, man, I, I I'm curious to ask you because uh before I, I graduated uh from the University of Northern Colorado, but I was down in Mississippi. Uh, at school with my brother for two years. So, being Canadian, I heard all kinds of uh, I heard all kinds of stuff, you know, or questions. Just being Canadian. So, ever since yeah. you you've been down uh, in Florida or down in Louisiana, or let's say just started out on campus in Louisiana, if you could tell us yeah. uh, one maybe funny Canadian type related joke or question you yeah. heard, 
I've heard damn near all of it, man. All our coaches, every time it's somewhat, every time it's a little bit sunny out, right? These uh, the yeah. southern guys, they think it's they think it's cold. It's like twenty degrees, and they're like, "Dang, it's yeah. cold out." And the coaches will come up to me, yeah. and they're like, "Man, Evan, this is a nice summer day for you, isn't it?" You know, and it, and it, and it really is, man. Yeah. It's like twenty degrees outside. It's nice. Yeah. It's warm. There's nothing to complain about. Um, but you know, I've heard it all. Like, oh, how cold does it get up there? How do you guys live in igloos? All this stuff, you know. All that yeah, basic yeah, Canadian yeah. <laughs> Canadian stereotype. That's funny, man. It's all fun and games. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So from uh, Clearwater, I know you got a couple looks. You end yeah. up down in uh, Admin, Louisiana, at the uh, southeastern Louisiana. You're a lion yeah. now. If you could yeah. tell us about that process and why, want why did you want to become a lion ultimately? Yeah, so um, before signing with, you know, Louisiana, both of my offers that I had um, before that, so Elon and Austin P were uncommittable because Austin P actually, their coaches went to um, UTEP, and okay. Elon had pulled up before I had um, been able to mm. visit them, really, you know, mm. see what they're about. So we were getting up to signing day, and I was stressing, man. I was I was mm. really nervous. I was I was thinking, like, there's, is this not going to work out? Like, am I going to go back home with, you know, no yeah. offers and play U sports? Um, but then I actually got a call about two weeks before signing day. And um, mm -hmm. our defense line coach, Coach Tom Rinaldi, he called me up and he ended up offering me a full scholarship to come here, which nice. I was super grateful for. I was excited. And um, I ended up taking that opportunity because um, – I really like Coach Tom Rinaldi. That's our, our D line coach. He's a great guy. Um, just we had some good conversations over the phone, and um, you know, I knew that I would be able to to come here and, and do my thing and really get to get to working with this group of guys. Hmm, really cool. And um, yeah. what do you what do you love about the school, the campus, the culture over there? And you you touched on something earlier. You said um, as much as you love the game. You want to also take something away, you know, from from the game. Take something back uh, for you. So I'm curious to know, man, what's your overall vision once it's all said and done at Southeastern? If everything goes the way you want, uh, what type of legacy? What would you want to accomplish over there? Yeah. So um, Southeastern, man, it's been great. I've been, I just, I'm still getting used to things. Obviously, I'm in my third week yeah. here right now, so. Um, yeah, it's all still new to me. The campus is nice. Um, everything is, you know, within a five minute walking distance, pretty much. Nice. Um, I mean, the thing that I love the most is we get free meals anytime we want, which is great. Of course. Um, of course. Yeah, that's a plus. And um, so, yeah, no, like just since I came here, it's been great, man. It's it's been it's been a, a change. But um, I'm looking forward to everything that comes with it, right? So, mm. but uh, as far as the team goes, um, I could really tell that they're all really close, right? We got we got all these dudes that have been playing together for for a long time, and, and southeastern Louisiana they like to recruit um, within the state of Louisiana, right? So yep. the guys that have been playing high school balls together, and and they ended up you know coming here together, and oh, wow. it's really but it's a tight knit it's a tight knit um, team. Um, which I'm excited to, you know, become a part of. Um, but, yeah, as far as, you know, as school goes here, everything's good. Classes are good and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's about it. Okay. Um, what does football mean to you, uh, Evan? I'm curious to know. Football football to me, man, is really a way of life. Like, I don't, I don't consider football as just – as just the sport um football sure. has given me so many, so many things um that are so valuable to me in my life um it's given mm -hmm. to me my my best friends the people that i you know share the best memories with it's given to me you know times that would never be able to be reciprocated or, or you know duplicated you know, like games like against Sarasota Riverview, like I'll never get to experience something like that again, right? That's just yeah. something so unique that I think football has given me the opportunity to. Um, football has also given me, you know, the lesson of just hard work. Um, before football, I didn't really know what what I wanted to do. Um, mm. I didn't know what I wanted out of it. 
and sorry to go back to that last question i think at the end of my four years here at southeastern i really i'd like to go to that next level i'd like to play for pro football um i'm just grinding to you know do everything i can to to make it to that level mm. but um i think football to me is just a collection of of a bunch of different things right it's a bunch of it's just I love every aspect of it, all the hard work. I love the hard days. I like the the days where we you know we get to go out on the field because you only see those game days, right? You don't see anything behind the scenes. You don't get to see that yep. those friendships that are made, or you know those hard times that people go through. All those all those things really make it um, make you a family with your team. And I'm just grateful that mm-hmm. football's been give that to me in in a, in a lot of different scenarios, right? In, in Florida and Louisiana now back in Orleans. Um, so football to me is really just um, a way of life, really. Love it, man. Definitely. A, a, a lot of great teachings uh, for sure within this game, especially, you know, behind the curtains, you know, the everyday Definitely. grind, man, waking up, doing what you need to do. Um, yeah. To piggyback off on that, on that question of what it means to you, um, I'm curious to know... Um, what do you play for? You know, because uh, obviously maybe we play for to make certain people proud. Maybe we play to accomplish a certain thing. You talked about wanting to be a pro uh, one day, and I wish it for you. You're you're definitely, you, you know, you got one foot in the door. Um, and obviously you're not even close today to the player you're going to be a, a few years from now, maybe even next year, right? So that's good. So I'm curious to know what are you playing for? Oh, um, shoot. Um, to be good honest, question, huh? <laughs> yeah, good question. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I'm playing for you know, if everything goes well in my life, right? If everything happens the way I want it to, if I am able to go to that next level and and make an earning, um, and you know get things out of that like you did like you you you've started on this new journey of you know interviewing athletes and really understanding who they are as humans um sure you're you're getting something out of it right you're you you that was that's been given to you from the game of football and um yeah i'm really playing football to you know get to that stage get to the stage of you know i played my years i was able to provide for who you know my future family um, because everything worked out well for me. And um, I hopefully, you know, one day want to, you know, inspire kids and help people um, become who they want to become, right? I think mm. that's a that's a very important part of, of playing football. It's not, you know, if you make it to the pros and you're just there playing, I mean, that's great for you, but you have the ability to, you know, change people's lives. And I think that's a very yep. important um, thing. And so if I'm able to get to that professional level, um, I think I really just want to be able to help people, help people change their lives, help people become better people, um, not only for other people, but for themselves, right? I think that's just an important thing. And so um, I'm really just playing football to get to the point of being able to provide for other people. Mm, Really cool, man. And I don't know what it is about um, football players, but – Whenever I speak to active players, to former uh, athletes, to guys who went on to start businesses, doing all kinds of things, um, the the um, the desire to give back is such a strong thing. The desire yes. to make someone's else uh, journey or life better is so powerful, and, and it's cool that you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I just think that that's because, like you know, growing up. In, in my case scenario, I know this might not be the case for, you know, some other athletes, but in my case scenario, I've been given so much, you know, mm. to help to go up my process. You know, I'm eternally in debt for, you know, all the people that have been able to be there for me and, you know, help me throughout the process. And I feel like I, I owe some sort of something back, right? I think I should, once I get to the level of those people that have been there for me, I want to be able to go back to that same community and help a, you know a young version of me become whoever they want to become you know yeah for sure for sure and uh, you're so right man because as athletes um 
you're kind of put in a, in a position where you're at the tip of the spear. What I mean by that, you play in the deep south. You know what it is, man. It's a, it's a religion down there. So being a, a football yeah. player is such a great honor. You're viewed a certain way. You're talked to a certain way. Uh, you're, yeah. you're put in certain uh, positions one way or another, but it also gives you a platform to impact. It gives you a yeah. platform to do things that transcend uh, the game. And I think that's what we're all meant to do one way or another. So, and that's the most important thing when it's all said and done, whether you go pro or not, uh, you know, yeah. or whether you go pro and it's over and then you move on to something else, uh, you still have this ability yeah. meant to transcend uh, whatever you're doing. Yeah. So um, I have two more questions for you, man. I have two more questions for you. Yeah. If you think of... Any younger athletes coming up, whether they're back home in Orleans or anywhere in Canada or anywhere in the U.S. or all over the world, really, uh, mm -hmm. who want to do something for themselves, who want to maximize their potential, and who want to be great, ultimately. Yeah. Um, what would you tell them that they should know that they don't necessarily know at this point? You get yeah. what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. the thing. We don't know what we don't know. Yeah, definitely. So um, I think two things are important. I think um, the number one thing that's, you know, helped me get to where I'm at is consistency. Um, we had a, a speaker come to our school a few years ago back in Orleans, and he had his, his whole thing was small, consistent actions, right? No. So if you're going to the gym – and you're doing a 45-minute workout, but you're there seven days a week compared to, you know, someone who might go three days a week, but they're there for an hour and a half. The person yeah. who's there less but is more consistent is going to get more out of it, right? If you're working to a goal, make sure that you're doing something every single day. You're consistent with, with, with your, you know, progression in, mm. in becoming what you want to become. I think that's that's huge in every aspect of life is that like consistency will get you where you want to go. But yeah. um, it's hard to be consistent without discipline. You need discipline and you need the, um, the you know, be, you need to be able to hold yourself accountable to a certain standard um, to be consistent. And so you don't want to, you know, be, be lazy and, and, you know, only do things a certain amount of times or when you feel like doing it. It's those days where, you know, you might have stayed out a little bit later, but you have an early morning workout and, you know, you're yeah. thinking in the morning, do I really want to do this? It's it's not like contemplating it is, yes, I'm going to go do this because I'm dedicated to what I want to do. I have a clear vision for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing would just really be like, don't lose track of the main goal. You know, small things can set things off of off of you know off off track it can make you yeah. it can make you um it can make or break you really if yeah. you let the, those those small little things you know i can't really i don't i don't know any examples off the top of my head but if you're letting emotions any, little you know, setbacks emotions, things stress, like that you know exactly stress anxiety you know all those things if you if you let those stop you from becoming who you want to become you will never get anywhere in life, right? Mm. Those, you know, tough times make tough people, right? And, um, you know, just making sure that that you're you're going through, you're going through with it, no matter what, right? Just mm. keeping, I said, consistent and and not letting those little things get in the way of of the main goal. Um, and yeah, that's 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 pretty that's pretty much it. Love it, man. So yeah. discipline consistency and uh staying focused you know on your goal yeah, you and, know, uh, another, yeah yeah another, another thing for young athletes um coming up is um you know we've all heard the saying saying like you're a product of your environment yes um, you can't choose a lot of things in your life you can't choose where you're born who you're born into mm -hmm you know what you're surrounded by but you can choose the people you hang around you can choose yeah. the people to surround yourself with and if you're constantly surrounding yourself with bums who go out and they you know party every day or they're, they're you know drinking or they're smoking or all these things mm -hmm. 
you are going to become that. You are going to become what you are surrounded by. And um, I think one of the most important things in, you know, my case is that I've been fortunate enough to have a friend group of, of you know, of grinders, of guys that want to be better for themselves. And I think that's a huge part of, of, um, of my journey is constantly being around guys who um, want to do better for themselves. That will, yeah. that will motivate you. That will give you the, you know, um, push that you need to be that person for yourself. If you're constantly surrounding yourself with bad people or, or you know, bad, um, you know, what's the word? Influences. Uh, yeah. Influ exactly. Bad influences, then you are going to become a product of your environment. So if you're mm. surrounding yourself with people who want to become successful, who want to be better for themselves, that is what you will become. And I think that that's just a very important part for, you know, young athletes growing up in high school, just surround yourself with the right people, essentially. So true, man. And yeah. what's common uh, about guys who are grinders or guys who are striving some, for something? And I'll love your opinion on that because I'm sure you'll agree is that they're not afraid to try hard things and accomplish yeah. hard things. Just look at what you're doing right now. It's not an easy task, right? You're being challenged every single day, man. You you're in the lines then, as we say, man. Trying to come out, trying to come out in a few years as a total different dude, and having yeah. accomplished uh, amazing things. That's hard, you know. That's yeah. hard. But man, you're going at yeah. it with your eyes wide open, going straight through it, right? So that's a really important thing, I believe, in that process. Yeah, definitely. I think also it's just like. Um, becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Um, that path of, of always doing the right thing, it might, it's not always going to be comfortable. It's not always going to feel like the right um, thing for you. But if yeah. you're uncomfortable in a situation, if you can learn to, to adapt to it and really um, control your environment, control your mental, control your, your physical, um, if you can become comfortable with being uncomfortable, that's really when you're going to become great. Right. It, Cause sure. no one gets to the, no one gets to the top. Um, I mean, I guess sports wise, it's not, it's never an easy path. It's always going to mm. be hard. It's mm. Comfortable in some place in, in most places. Right. So um, yeah, I think just everyone that wants to be great for themselves, they have to just learn to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. Perfect, man. And um, yeah. here's my last question. Uh, if there's yeah. another athlete uh, that you know also, football player also, um, who has a great story, uh, who you feel people should get a glimpse of and get to know uh, because they have great things to share to hopefully inspire somebody else, and they're going for it also, man. They're striving for their dreams. Um, who would that be if you want to give them a shout-out and uh, why? Yeah, um, I think our quarterback from from CAI last year, Evans Chuba. Hmm. Um, yeah, he's at uh, Washington State, right? He's at Washington State now. Yeah, he's he's a great dude. Um, he went through yeah. a lot in this past year. Um, he 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 unfortunately like battled some injuries throughout the year, which kept him out. Um, he wasn't able to play, but I hmm. think that's you know that's a part of his story. That's a part of who he's going to become. Um, I think he definitely has some some valuable lessons to to share with people, um, and you know he's ve he's very well spoken. He's he can he can influence a lot of people. I think and with it with his story, love it. And he's a Montreal kid too, correct? Yeah, he's from yeah, he's from Montreal. All right, okay, we'll make that happen. We can make that happen, uh, definitely, yeah. definitely. All right, man. So Evan, this is it for today. Um, Honestly, I was excited about our conversation, but I come out um, being very, very inspired, okay, just by listening to you talk, uh, your mindset, and uh, just the little uh, things that you picked up along the way, you know, like discipline, like doing hard thing, being soft-spoken, but I know being a lion at the same time, right? There's, It's no coincidence that you're down at Southeastern Louisiana, so... Listen up, man. I just want to tell you that we wish you the best for your journey. Uh, thank you for inspiring other guys, man, and just blessing us today. And uh, 
being here also just to share this conversation. And I appreciate you, man, definitely. Definitely. I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate, you know, you allowing me to come on here and, and speak some speak some stuff. So I'm just uh, speak some life. grateful that some you life. Have me. Yes, sir. Thank you. Definitely. Perfect. So, yes, guys, this is it, man, for another episode of uh, Champion Beyond the Huddle. Uh, listen up, man. If you if you learn something, uh, seriously, if you learn something, if you got inspired, if you if it's gonna help you on your journey as a young football player looking to go to the next level, whatever that means for you, uh, hit that subscribe button. Share this with somebody else. Okay, that's the goal in the end is to do some good. Uh, you're much more than an athlete, just like these guys, man. And uh, see you next time. Take care, guys.